I bought this broken Acer laptop from eBay. And in the description, it's got touchscreen issues, trackpad issues, and all kinds of scruffs and scratches on the surface. I'm going to see if I can repair this laptop to get it up and working again. The model is an Acer Spin3 SP314-54N56NU, and I got this for 250 Canadian dollars. The coolest part is that it also has a built-in stylus and the screen can flip 360 degrees. Now in any repair, the first thing I need to do is to confirm the description. And indeed, there's a lot of scratches and sticker residue on the front and back panels. It also doesn't come with a charger, so I had to buy one from Amazon. I picked this one up for about $50 and it's designed specifically for the Spin 3. The reason why I didn't choose a generic charger is because this particular laptop takes a smaller barrel jack compared to regular ones. Now that everything's plugged in, let's turn it on and confirm the issues. It seems to have entered into recovery mode, but no worries, we'll just reboot it. Fast forwarding through the setup process, we come to the Windows desktop. Checking the touchscreen and the trackpad, we can see that they both don't work. Now, for this particular issue, there's only two possibilities, and it's either going to be software or hardware. The easiest one is to rule out the software, because it doesn't require any additional parts. So let's do that first. I'm going to start off by running a Windows update, and this will install all the appropriate software. Generally, this fixes a lot of common software issues and makes everything more up to date. Now, some users don't recommend using Windows Update and prefer doing things manually. This way, they know exactly what's getting installed onto the PC so they can maximize the performance. Now, I'm not that hardcore, and really for the general user, the default Windows updates is good enough. After reboot, we'll test the screen and trackpad to see if they work again. And just like that, the touchscreen and trackpad issues are both fixed. Now, this particular fix wasn't too exciting, but we're not quite done yet because I still have to test out all the other components. This includes the USB ports, the HDMI, stylus, and so on. Here, during my testing, I found that the speakers actually didn't work. Clicking the speaker icon shows that there's no speakers or microphones connected, which is kind of weird because laptops generally have built-in speakers and built-in microphones. To confirm that these components are actually connected, we'll need to go into the device manager. This is a built-in program that lists all the hardware that's connected to the computer. In our case, we're checking for the audio. Here we can see that the audio device is connected, but with an exclamation mark. Generally, this means that the hardware is installed, but the software, or the driver, wasn't. The driver allows the hardware to communicate with the software so that it could function properly. Updating it through the automated process shows that Windows is unable to find a better driver. This isn't too much of an issue because that means we'll have to do it manually. The best way to go about this is to go onto the manufacturer's website, and in this case, it's Acer. Here, we'll see the support tab and under it, we'll click drivers and manuals. We'll use the drop-down menus to select our device and open up a new page. Under the drop-down menus for drivers, we're specifically looking for audio drivers. Now there's a bunch of options, including the audio driver, the audio console driver, and the audio utility. I'm looking for the audio driver itself though, because the other two are mostly for customizing the sound equalization. Next, I'm going to download and then install the audio driver. Here, we're presented with the installation wizard. I always found it weird that Windows called it a wizard. It would have been more descriptive to call it a setup tool or an installer. Anyways, the install takes about five minutes to complete and I'll just reboot the computer. Now that we have the computer rebooted, I'm gonna test out the speaker. Black bars up at the top and bottom. And just like that, we have working audio. Checking the hardware devices, we can also see that we got the microphones. Great, so now that we've confirmed all the components work, there's still one more thing to do, and that's to clean the sticker residue. There's a bunch of scratches, so the easiest way would be to replace the front and back covers. Taking a quick look at replacement parts, this would have costed me $100 and two months of shipping from China. That's almost half the price of this laptop, and I simply don't have two months. So I called up a local body shop and asked them their thoughts for repairing this cover. Now the cover is made out of aluminum and they said that there's no easy way to remove the scratches. You'll have to buff it out, apply primer, and then apply a new coat of paint. All this time and effort really isn't worth it. And fair enough. So I guess I'll have to live with the scratches. But there is something I can do about the stickers. To remove the stickers, I apply a bit of rubbing alcohol and then rub away. The alcohol dissolves the sticker residue and it comes off very clean. Honestly, the scratches are a bit of an eyesore, but I don't think it looks that bad. To me, as long as the laptop is functional, that's all that really matters. Now at this point, I thought I was done, 
But when I went to put away the computer, I heard a bit of rattling inside. And upon closer inspection, it seemed like some of the screws are not in all the way. So I guess it's time to open up the computer and find out what's going on. There's a total of 11 screws in the back, with 10 along the perimeter and one in the middle. The back cover can be opened by sliding a credit card or any thin object between the crevice. After the back cover is unclipped, we get our first look inside the device. And man, is it full of glitter. Whoever owned this laptop last really enjoyed using glitter on the computer. Looks like I'm gonna have to clean up this computer. But first, that rattling noise. Turns out it was caused by the screw mount. The last owner must have accessed the back panel and accidentally sheared it off. No problem, we'll just use a bit of super glue and glue it right back. Next, I'll just let it cure for 10 minutes. Now that we've handled the screw mount, we'll need to deal with the glitter. For this, I'll take a vacuum cleaner with a very soft brush and it'll suck everything up. The trick here is to go over everything gently, otherwise components can be easily sheared off. Again, everything is very fragile, so I have to be super careful. For the more stubborn glitter, I'll just wipe it off with a damp paper towel. With glitter, it's almost impossible to get every little speck out. So as long as it's clean enough, I'm pretty happy with the results. I'll clip the back panel into place and screw everything back in. And that's it. This laptop retails for $999, and I was able to get it for slightly over $300. Now, not all repairs are going to be as straightforward as this one, and I was quite lucky in that it was mainly just a software issue. But it really shows that not all repairs require very sophisticated equipment or knowledge. Alright, that's it from me. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.